Graphing in the Cartesian plane. The Cartesian plane is also known as the rectangular coordinate system. Now I like to call it the Cartesian plane because it was devised and discovered by a young French man named René Descartes. It looks like Descartes, but it's Descartes. Now, the Cartesian plane is devised of a horizontal number line we'll call the x-axis. Notice in the center is the zero, and the positives are to the right, and the negatives are to the left. The vertical number line crosses it at zero, and along the x and y axis, along the y axis, the positives are going up, the negatives are going down. The center of intersection in the middle is known as the origin. That's where both number lines are zero. Now when you draw this Cartesian set of axes on a flat plane, it creates four regions. These regions are known as quadrants. And you always count the quadrants starting in the upper right corner. That's quadrant one, and then you go counterclockwise to quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. We still to this day use Roman numerals because that's the way Rene Descartes originally set it up. Now to graph on the Cartesian plane, you will use an ordered pair. Let me look at the ordered pair of numbers, negative three and four. You will always note that the first number is always the x coordinate and the second number is the y coordinate. You will first start at the zero and then move over to negative 3 on the x-axis, but don't put your point there. Go on up 4 on the y-axis. So the point is actually out here in quadrant 2. If you cross-reference it back, it references back to negative 3 on the x-axis and positive 4 on the y-axis. Now we will also be looking at graphing shapes on this line, on this system. Now, the most basic shape you can graph is called a straight line, a linear shape. A linear shape always occurs when you look at the x coordinate there, the x variable, that has an understood exponent of one. We say it's an understood one. And that tells me it's gonna be linear, a line. Now, one of the easiest ways to graph a line is to make yourself a chart with X and Y. In the X column, I'm going to choose a few numbers. Let's say uh, maybe a negative 1, a 0, and a positive 1. It doesn't matter which numbers you choose. Then you will take those numbers one by one, and you will substitute them into the original equation. So if I take my negative 1 and substitute it in, I get y equals 4 times negative 1 subtract 2. When you put that in your calculator or work that out by hand, that ends up being negative 6. So when x is negative 1, y is negative 6. You'll do the same thing with the 0, and we get negative 2 there. And you'll do the same thing with the 1. Again, I'm just using the order of operations and 4 minus 2 would be 2. Then we would plot these points. So I go negative 1, negative 6, which is down here. It actually didn't have a tick mark. And then 0, negative 2 is right here. And then 1, positive 2 is right here. When you connect those three points, you will have your straight line. Now another thing to remember would be intercepts. The y-intercept is right here. Notice that's where the line crosses the y-axis. The x-intercept is up here, but it appears to be between 0 and 1. If I want to be really sure where that x-intercept is, I can actually use this little rule. To find an x-intercept, let the y in the equation be 0. So I'm going to substitute this time a number in for the y, a 0. And I'm going to solve. If I add 2 to both sides, 
I end up with 4x equals 2 and then divide by 4 and that reduces to be 1 half. So I was correct in thinking that was about 1 half. So the x-intercept would be 1 half comma 0. Now when it comes to straight lines, there are two unique straight lines, the vertical and the horizontal straight line. These are really fairly easy to graph. With y equals 3, I will go to the positive 3 on the y-axis and put a point. Then I will always just draw my line straight across at a 90 degree right angle, and that is a horizontal line. You will always have a horizontal line when there is a y value only. Notice there was no x in the problem. Now if I go to the next example, x equals negative 5, I go to the negative 5 on the x-axis, put a point, again draw the line so that it crosses that point at a 90 degree right angle. And that gives me a vertical line. Anytime the equation only has the x, it will always be a vertical line. Now what about nonlinear equations? Notice this one has x squared. If the exponent is 2, that will always create what we call a parabola. A parabola is a U or a horseshoe shape. You may have recognized parabolas before when you've eaten at that fine dining establishment that uses two parabolas upside down. That's right, McDonald's uses their logo as two parabolas upside down. Now if the x squared is positive, like in this example, it opens up. However, if you ever see negative x squared, then that means it will open down, like the golden arches at McDonald's. The number behind the x squared will always be the y-intercept number. Now, let me graph this one. I know it's a parabola because it's x squared and the y-intercept is negative 3. So I put my negative 3 right down here. Now, I could just go ahead and draw the u-shape opening up if I didn't need to be very precise. If I wanted to be more precise, I could make a chart, and let's maybe use a negative one and a positive one. Remember now, we always substitute that in for the x, negative one squared minus three, use parentheses, because negative times negative is positive one, one minus three is negative two, and then I can do the same thing with my positive one. That will also give me a negative two. So that's going to be right here and right here. That gives you a little more precise location. But x squared is always a parabola. What happens when we have exponent of 3? We call that the S-curve. Anyone who lives in the country and travels a country road may have ridden on a road that had an S-curve in it. An S-curve looks like this. It's like you're going straight along driving and all of a sudden there's a hard curve in the middle of it. Now this number at the end again is my y-intercept. Now the s-curve is in the shape that I've given you here to the right. If you have a negative x to the third then that shape will be inverted and it will go in the opposite direction like that. Okay, first I'm going to plot the positive 1, which is right here on the y-axis, that's the y-intercept, and then it goes up to the right, and it goes down to the left. Again, if you wanted to be more precise, you could use the xy chart. Our last basic shape is the absolute value of x. The absolute value of x is always a V shape. And again, this last number at the end is your y-intercept. Now, I'm going to go to my positive 2, put the y-intercept point, and draw a V. When you draw a V, this particular V shape, uh, the y-intercept, um, excuse me, the absolute value will always be a 90 degree in this case. 
Uh, it will open up if it's absolute value, but if you have negative absolute value of x, that opens downward. So just remember that negative in front will cause it to open down. Well, I hope this has helped you learn more about graphing in the Cartesian coordinate system, also known as the rectangular coordinate system.